Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. There are many ways in which courage can be displayed. Sometimes it's in battle or a physical emergency. Other times, it's another type of courage. I have in mind the courage to face the consequences of a decision. A person knows sometimes that by making a certain decision, he is leaving himself wide open for the possibility of serious results. Our story today involves both types of courage. You see if you can determine which is the harder. Here's our story. Earthquake. For years, the town of Knotty Pine didn't grow or shrink a quarter of an inch. But now, as with many other towns throughout the United States, a growth period is taking place, as though an effort is being made to catch up for the years of inactivity. Our latest accomplishment is the putting up of a 10-story building, which to us is a skyscraper. The other day, Ranger Ralph Carpenter and I were gawking at the man working high up, just like the rest of the sidewalk superintendents. I just can't believe that Naughty Pine's going to have a building as large as this one. Yeah. A real giant for us, all right. Of course, to big city folk, this ten-story job wouldn't even rate a second look. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't. <laughs> it must be tedious work to set all those steel reinforcing rods and wire them in place so they'll stay right there when the concrete's poured. Well, it's like everything else. There's an art to it, you know. <laughs> hey, here comes Bernie. Oh, so it is. Uh, hello, Bernie. Hello, Bill, Ralph. Say, isn't this the greatest thing we've ever had happen to us? <laughs> it sure is, Bernie. <laughs> of course, uh, to you, everything is great. Of course, life is great. You fellas are great. <laughs> Why, this building's great. Naughty Pine's beginning to come out of its cocoon, and it'll be great someday. And soon, you watch and see now that the ice is broken. You could be right, Bill. I realize that, Ralph. Uh, say, Bernie, how's your civil defense program coming along? Great. <laughs> well, what else did you expect me to say? Uh, nothing. But I'd like some facts and statistics so I can evaluate your word great. How much progress does great mean? <laughs> he can't tell you, Bill. It's just uh, great, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bernie, we're not trying to be rude, but you know yourself that your stock answer of everything being great is a standard non-committal statement by you. Oh, sure, I know. <laughs> Don't worry, my feelings aren't hurt. I was just trying to think of a way I could tell you what I mean. Well, uh, how does it compare to a month ago? Or six months ago? Well, well, I'll tell you. You see, uh, well, that is... Uh-huh. You've told me just what I want to know, Bernie. I guess he has. Ah, but what's the big rush? Who's going to bomb Naughty Pine? That I can't tell you. That's what I mean. Why should we rush ourselves to death setting up our civil defense when we're not even a halfway decent target? What do we got here that's so important? Lumber? Rosin? Turpentine? Wood pulp? Natural resources? Especially power dams. Uh, I never thought of it that way. Besides that, we've also got a lot of mining and certainly a wealth of ranching and farming. Maybe I've been asleep at the switch and looking at this thing in the wrong light. Mm -hmm. well, not that we're so bad off. I mean, we're pretty well organized, even for a disaster call. Yeah, but the first time we had a drill, the organization was pretty loose. And a lot of precious time was lost. You know, with large office buildings going up, more may start later on. That'll mean a lot more industry and people moving into Naughty Pine. Mm -hmm. You've convinced me. Perhaps we should have another disaster drill in about six weeks. That'll give me time to tighten up the loose ends into a really efficient operation. Hey, I'll see you fellas later. 
Don't let them put this building up wrong now. <laughs> <laughs> Where you want, Bertie? So long. Bye. <laughs> uh, great guy. Oh, those fellas work up high. Just like they were at home on the ground. They are. They are what? At home, up in the air, on a skinny plank or beam. <laughs> ah, come on, we better get over to the office. Yeah. The afternoon will be gone, we won't have accomplished a thing. <laughs> singing was that bad? Something's wrong. Look at the people running around in the street. Yeah. Come on. We got to stop a panic. Yeah, but what happened? I think we've had an earthquake. Stumpy, Gray Wolf, Tom, Ralph, let's get these people off the streets and back to their homes. All right. All right. Well, going back to their offices, stores, homes now. Sure glad we avoided a panic. I right, saw so my bill. That was a big one, huh? Or I missed my guess. That was that, all right. But it was short. That's what saved the day. Uh, Cal, I'd like to use your radio telephone. Yeah, help yourself. I'll check on the boys. Okay, thanks. Uh, operator, get me Bernard Haltman, civil defense coordinator. And quick, please. Oh, uh, no answer, huh? All right, operator. Here comes Bernie! Now, how's it look, Bill? I was just trying to call you to find out where you were. No, it looks like no one's been hurt, Bernie. It's a small property damage. That's good. We're getting our disaster drill sooner than we expected. Yeah. I better get the men and teams moving around to find out if anyone's hurt. I'll get the carpenter crews started boarding up the broken and cracked plate glass windows. Fine. The phone operators are waiting for emergency calls, and the radio station's giving out instructions how to get help. Wonderful. I think we ought to be able to secure this in a couple of hours, unless another tremor hits us. Well, it looks like everything's secure now. That yeah, sure does, Cal. I think the job's well done. I wonder if we're going to have another. I don't know. They usually come several at a time. Well, I'll see if I can find out. Operator, uh, get me Charles Sheldon at State University. Uh, we not have earthquake in a long time now. It too bad people not be more calm. And after a couple of them get hurt because they panic, they'll settle down. Well, that's learning the hard way, though. Uh, hello, Charlie. Uh, Bill Jefferson. Yeah, we sure did. Yeah. Uh, what's that quake-watching machine of yours say? Huh? Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Okay, we'll see you. Bye. Yeah, bad news, huh? Yeah. Charlie said they've been getting quite a show on the seismograph. They think a whole subterranean shelf is shifting. We could get several violent and lengthy shocks. Well, then we'd better talk to the people on the radio and television and tell them what to do. Uh, will you talk on television, Bill? I'll be glad to. Then I think the sheriff and your boys ought to circulate around and tell the people to listen. We can use power megaphones, and Cal's got a PA system for one of his squads. That's a fine idea. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Thank you. 
Attention, attention please. Listen to your radio or television in half an hour. At exactly three o'clock this afternoon, you will be instructed how to take care of yourself in case another tremor takes place. Listen to your radio or television at three o'clock. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's three o'clock, and here is Chief Ranger Bill Jefferson to talk to you. Mr. Jefferson. Thank you. Folks, I always believe that the best way to avoid panic and injury is to let everyone know the truth. Now, the experts tell us that we can expect more tremors, and they'll be violent and lengthy. We must face the facts so we can be adequately forewarned. Now, the schools and all public meeting places will be closed until this danger passes. In your own homes or places of business, the best thing to do is stand in the doorways. That'll protect you from falling plaster and other objects. Or, if there's time, get under a strong table or under a bed. Don't, under any circumstances, run out into the street. You might get hurt or killed from falling pieces of building or other objects. And you also hamper the emergency equipment and teams from operating efficiently. Don't try to leave the town because you won't be permitted to do so. We must keep the roads open for emergency use. Every five minutes, this station and the radio station will broadcast the phone numbers you can dial to get help if you need it. And now, for the most important thing. Don't lose your head, or you may lose your life. Just keep calm. Thank you. And now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Cups, every one of them busted. <laughs> that coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just so long as they didn't break on your head, it's all right. <laughs> well, you got a point there, Sonny. <laughs> uh, what a mess. Maybe we ought to leave it since as soon as we clean it up, it'll just happen all over again. Uh, superstitious, Ralph? No, just realistic. Uh, maybe Ralph speak more truth than fiction. <laughs> hey, fellas, uh, I just thought of something. Uh, where are you going? Over to the new building. Oh, you want company? Sure. Uh, come on, Ralph. All right. Ranger, this building's made of reinforced concrete and steel girders riveted together. I can't possibly see how any earthquake could affect us. Well, if you feel that you're safe, then that's good enough for me. I'm not an engineer, Mr. Hanson, but I'm concerned about the safety of your men. Well, so am I, Mr. Jefferson. Oh, I suppose there might be some danger, but it would be so slight that it wouldn't count. The men are used to working on swinging and swaying footing. Uh-huh. Well, thanks for your time. Uh, I know you're a busy man. That's quite all right. Thanks for stopping by and being interested. I'll keep a sharp eye for any danger to the men. That'll be fine, Mr. Hanson. So long. Good day. He sure seems like a nice fellow. Yeah. He seems to be pretty alert for his men, too. Well, I guess we might as well go back over to the office, finish up some paperwork. Got to hit the West Trail in the morning. Are we going to take the pack mules this trip? You said it. We'll be gone three or four weeks, depending on how our surveying goes. Ah, that's what I like. A long trek on the trail with pack mules. <laughs> Maybe you'll think differently after three or four weeks in the saddle, Ralph. Oh, not if I bring along a pillow, <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I'll give you a pillow right on the top of your head. <laughs> Won't do me any good there, Bill. <laughs> It's quitting time. Maybe we can go home on time for a change. Ah, that's a good thought. Let's go. Hey, that 
that was a bad one. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Hey, door jammed from quick. Quick, oh, the window. Let's try window. Uh, it's jammed through. All right, stand back, fellas. All right, stand back. All right, let's get to our trucks. All right. Boy, what a mess. All right, let's start going through all the buildings one by one, looking for injured people. Take block and tackle along and pry bars with you. Uh, we get started right now. Ralph, get on the radio and call the boys in from the fire towers and the out districts and tell them to get here on the double. Right away, Bill. Hello, Bill. Oh, hello, Bernie. Boy, I never thought this had happened to us. Look at those buildings. Yeah. Guess we've all been caught flat-footed. I sent my man into the buildings along Main Street to search for the injured. Fine. I'll get my team started going through the rest of the large buildings in the heart of town. All right. Oh, uh, here comes Cal and his men. Uh, Let them work with you and your men along Main Street. That'll help a lot. Okay, Bernie. I'll leave Ralph with the radio truck, and he can act as sort of a central operations point for this disaster. Fine. I'll see you later. So far, everyone's gotten out with only scratches and bruises. <laughs> I guess they listened to what they were told to do. Uh, uh, Oops, I talked too soon. <laughs> Where'd that groan come from? Over there, in stairwell. He had all broken and twisted. Hey, a couple of you fellers, over here! Hey, over there, come on, man. Well, there he is. I can see his hand. Ah, there a heavy beam across him. We have to use block and tackle to move it. Yep. That's what I need, yeah. All right, let's get it right. Come on, man. Okay. Come on. That's it. Easy. Okay, boys. Lend a hand on this rope now. No, when I say so, you fellers raise the beam with the block and tackle. Gray Wolf and I'll pull this feller out. Uh, there, I'll lift him up to you. I'm all ready. I'm ready, too. Now, boys! A little more. That good work, man. That good. There now. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, Gray Wolf. Let's have him up here now. Get, get him. That's here. There he is. All right. Let's get him on a stretcher and out to the ambulance right quick. He looks pretty bad. I think we've been fortunate so far. Only one serious casualty. Not right. It could be very bad. How many buildings did you check, Bill? Well, I searched the rest of the buildings from here to the corner. I better start across the street now. Cal and his men are in the next block. Bill, Bill, the building's caved in. What? What building? The new building, the one they're putting up. The new building? Yeah. Stumpy, tell Cal and his boys to split up so they can take over from us. We'll meet you over at the new building. Right! All right, let's go, fellas. Bill, there's a dozen men trapped under all this steel and concrete. Where's Hanson? He's dead. He saw it coming and he tried to get the men out. He never got to them. A steel beam nailed him on the way. Oh, it's too bad. I'm sorry to hear it. Yeah, so am I. Bill, you take charge of this. You're familiar with this sort of rescue and I'm not. Okay. Ralph, Gray Wolf... Round up all the men you can who can operate cranes, bulldozers, and drive trucks. Okay. Hey, here comes Tom and the boys. Yeah, just in time, too. Uh, Tom! I'm sorry we couldn't make any sooner, but we came a long way. Well, you did fine. Take the rest of the boys and find all the cables you can. 
There are a dozen men buried under that. Come on. We'll start pulling and lift off the slabs of concrete and steel beams with trucks, bulldozers, and cranes as quickly as we can. Right. Ralph and Grey Wolf are rounding up drivers. In fact, here comes someone right now, so get to work. On the double. Come on, men. Let's go with it. Let's get out of here. Oh, you sure know how to get that ball bouncing in a hurry, Bill. Thanks. We need a couple dozen more men, Bernie, and quick, too. Well, I haven't got them. The rest of the men are working through the other buildings in town, even state troopers. You didn't understand me. I need more men right now. I don't care where you have to go to get them. Get them! Hey, I, I know where we can get men. That a boy, where? Trustees from the state prison. The warden told me a long time ago they'd be glad to help. What are you waiting for? This is a chance I've been waiting for, Mike. Yeah, Fingers, you were right. Being good boys is going to get us out of here quicker and safer than trying to make a break. <laughs> you said it. That <laughs> dumb brother of mine don't know it, but uh, he's going to be the fall guy. When are we going to make our break? Huh? When we get to the building. Everybody will be so busy trying to get those buried guys out, they won't bother with us. And we'll sneak off and be gone. You said it. <laughs> Hey, all right, you guys, get in the trucks and be quick about it. We're in a hurry. All right, we're going. Tom, have you made contact with the buried men yet? Not yet. Push your men harder. Stumpy, have you found anyone yet? No, oh, nary a soul. Of course, we got a long way to go. All right, let's step on it. Grey Wolf, have you made contact yet? No, but maybe any time now. Tell those men to work faster, but carefully. Bernie, where are those convicts? Well, the warden said... Hey, here come two prison trucks right now. Oh, great. We'll split the men up under the crew chiefs. Fingers, how'd you get here? <laughs> yeah, I've been a good boy, Bernie. Mike, uh, I'd like you to meet my kid brother, Bernie. Howdy, Bernie. <laughs> how'd you get here with the trustees? Well, I've got a good notion to hustle all you men back to the prison. Oh, no, Bernie, don't act so nasty. We're good boys now, aren't we, Mike? Sure, we're good boys. Besides, uh, you've got a big job here. I understand some guys are in bad trouble. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to get them out. All right, now get to work and no funny stuff, and I'll be watching you. If you've changed, I'll be the first one to help you go straight. <laughs> Ain't he sweet? He's going to help us, but not to go straight. <laughs> so long, chump. Yeah, let's leave this place fast, huh? Yeah, take it easy. We gotta make this look good, you know? You mean we gotta work? Sure, for a while. <laughs> Till that dumb brother of mine thinks we're okay and relaxes. <laughs> Bernie, we made contact with the buried men. They're all... Hey, Bernie, are you listening? Huh? Uh, what'd you say? I said... Hey, what's the matter with you? Bernie, snap out of it. What's wrong? Uh-huh. Oh, no, nothing. Nothing at all. Uh -huh. You were saying... We've contacted the men, and most of them aren't even hurt. They're buried in a pocket. It'll be touchy to get them uncovered, but I think we can do it safely. Uh, that's, that's fine. I'm glad to hear it. Hey, man, I think you better go home. This has been too much for you. Ah, uh, no, no, I'll be all right. Just be sure we send the convicts back as soon as you can spare them. Oh, sure, that's what I plan to do. I'll see you later. Keep working over behind that pile of concrete. We'll make our break from there. Okay. Come on, get moving. Okay, okay, okay. Now, come on. 
You can't get away with it, Fingers. Hey, Where did the... you come from? You... Oh, get out of the way, Chum, before you get hurt. I'm not moving and you're not going. No. <laughs> oh, come on, Fingers, let's go. Hey, you said it. Head for the bushes over there. We're almost in the bushes, and we can figure out which is the best way to get out of town. Yeah, yeah. Where do you two think you're going? A cop. No, just a ranger. Let's take him. He's alone. Come on, You shouldn't have tried it, boys. All right. Pick yourselves up and. Let's go back. It's too bad Mr. Hansen was killed. All other men got out alive. Yeah. He did try to save his man the best way he knew how. I hope this end of earthquakes for a long time. How's your head, Bernie? <laughs> it's okay now. That's ah, a strange thing, this life we live. What you mean, Bernie? Ah, oh, Hanson gets killed doing good, and my brother's still alive, and he's a hardened criminal. Well, there's no answer, except that God governs every detail of our lives. Well, it doesn't seem fair. To us? No, it doesn't. But the Lord in heaven knows just when a man's life should end. To me, it just points up the brevity of life. Now, necessary for all of us to be ready. I'm not bitter, but... But why does God let guys like my brother live? Maybe he's patiently waiting for the chance to change him. Ah, he'll never be changed. I wouldn't be so sure, Bernie. And maybe you've got an answer? I have. It's a person. Jesus Christ. When he's allowed to enter a life, he transforms it. Yeah, I wish you could talk to my brother chance ever comes, I'd like to do just that. Hey, Bill. Sheriff mm -hmm. wants to see you. Okay, Ralph. I'll see you sometime later, Bernie. Or we'll get together. Fine. And Bernie, we've gotten the answer to my question of a few days ago. Oh? I think our civilian defense team is top rate. <laughs> Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! This is Stumpy Jenkins, Ranger Bill's old sidekick, as I guess you all know. Just adding a little extra word of thanks for getting yourself in on the program today. Always glad to have you along. And I hope you invite your friends, too, for we sure got lots of adventures to tell you about. And we don't want you to miss any of them. So you make sure to be there by your radio every week. Don't lose out on our next story.